to the channel and we're going to be discussing uh season 9 episode 12 of married to medicine and we're going to have a little audio and we're going to do our little uh sick well do our little spiel or how we see it and then last you're going to get all those comments and tell me what you thought about the whole uh scenario they were throwing to us or narrative they were throwing to us for this particular episode now of course if we piggyback off of last, well, not last week, but the week before that, when they were all at uh, Quartz's home as a housewarming uh, event as well as Christmas event. So she was doing two things at one time. And, of course, we all do know that, um, what was her name? Audrea and um, Toya was, was really going to get to fighting, but it didn't happen because people had broken up. But, you know, you just don't get into somebody's personal space and buck at them and breast, we call it breast hit each other, <laughs> your other's chest. Honey, Tanya just mushed her. And when I say mushed, I mean just took her palm of her hands and put it on uh, Audrey's face and pushed her back some. And, of course, uh, the land of the jab Audrey was trying to uh, put on Toya. It got foiled because the men had went on and caught her, got her together. Her husband took over there in the corner and was trying to tell her to focus on him and to calm down. You know, it can't be tearing up folks' houses, but Carl was right on the money. She said, you you break it, you fix it, or you pay. That's what she said. You break it, you pay for it. And she don't take payment plans. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord, you are so funny. But a lot of things happened in this particular episode. Uh, they even went so far as to Minnie Quad. She put speculation out there that maybe Tanya, I mean, not Tanya, Toya did something or had something to do with um, uh, Anila's house getting broke into because they're all living in a gated community. Uh, Toya actually had a party that day or night that... Uh, Anila's house got broken into so everybody's alluding to me you know everybody I'm talking about quad and I'm talking about uh who else said that I think Carrie but one thing we have to do we have to be very careful when we're putting uh allegations on someone that they may have had something to do with it because you know the officers of the law are going to come and pretty much see what you do know they're gonna come knocking at your door and saying you know what so and so said that you had knowledge or you could have known who may have broken into anila's house and this that and the third and i'm like and then toy gonna open up her mouth I'm like, well maybe she faked it i'm like for an ex uh, insurance scam I like Toy. If you don't shut your mouth, if you don't shut your mouth, please do before you get in trouble. You be seeking legal action against you for being a co-conspirator of a uh, break-in. You know, it's very seriously. Uh, what do you call it? It's a serious offense that you'll be, you know, creating for yourself. But you know, like I said, uh, don't I don't nobody really believe Toy. You did it. excuse me except for um quad she pretty much put the the scenario out there and she felt that Tor toya fit the perfect profile of someone who was disgruntled with anila and had something to get back at her uh about and this is the way she probably did it allegedly uh with what was going on but i'm like you just don't put shit like that out there you know what i'm saying because then people start looking at you and, you know, it just is what it is. Then you had um, 
Eugene going to him and Tori was taking a ride to go uh, pick up some meat and some other accessories that were going to go with uh, their uh, son's Ashton's birthday party. He wanted to have a dinner uh, for his friends and stuff. And I was like, okay, he's starting young to get the taste of the good life. And, of course, you had Eugene in the kitchen helping him and this, then the third. But they went out to pretty much basically get uh, the dinner from the meat to the vegetables to the dessert to the sparkling um, juice that looked like wine for them because that's how he wanted it done. And of course, uh, I mean, Toya had the opportunity to decorate how she wanted his birthday party to be seen as okay and she was doing it for the nine so she got roses for every um girl that was accompanying you know or coming to his uh shindy he was trying to put together for them and honey he wanted some expensive type of japanese beef or something and i was like well what you know about that kind of stuff but when you got a mama like toya you become very uh rehearsed about certain things when it comes to the uh privy life um and then as they were driving alone they had um was mixing you know business with uh, pleasure type of talk uh and she uh was asking uh her son why didn't you uh why she get a letter from your teacher saying you didn't turn in your homework and um, he was saying, you know, I don't know what he was really saying. It didn't make much difference because Tori should have made sure that homework was done. Instead of telling her son, well, you should have told the teacher that you had a lot going on and you needed to do this and the third. And that just wasn't what she should have said was that wasn't a priority. I'm like, Portia, I mean, um. Well, she act like Portia. Tori do act like Portia a lot. Like, she's scatterbranded. And you're there with a the child Monday through Sunday. I mean, come on. What, what do you mean? To let him tell his teacher he just couldn't get it done. Well, you know, he could have just got an F, okay? Because when a teacher asks you to do something as far as an assignment, there's no uh, negotiating. There's no, uh, let me see when I can do, when I can fit it in my schedule. Uh, Tori, you need to stop it, okay? Because you're growing up children that are going to be adults one day. And then they're going to think they need to run the show. Even when they're in the learning capacity. They're not in the going out, let me show you how to do this type of frame of mind. Like, girl. But anyway, uh, we went to uh, the part where Eugene was telling Toya that he took the job as the oncologist specialist or something to that degree. He's going to be dealing with cancer folks pretty much and um, anything that goes around, in the, goes around in that particular practice of medicine. And he wasn't going to be able to work the weekend so he's going to be free for the weekends and then she's going to say something stupid like, oh now we can have night sex or we can have sex. I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, you know, but it, it just is yeah, what it is. He loved Toya. Toya will put up with him. We'll just say that much. Because she don't care nothing about his package down there. Going south, as you can see. Because she said it just, it's just it's too short. Or something to that degree. Uh, <laughs> Toya's just a hot mess, okay? I don't know how Eugene got her. But just like Damien loved himself some heavenly. Uh, Eugene loved himself some Toya. So... It just is what it is because he definitely can change his uh, way of viewing Toya and putting up with her shenanigans. But it makes me think he like it. He, you know, she probably was like this when she was in high school and college, if she went to college. But uh, that's what he likes. So ain't no sense of getting on Toya about it. You have to get on with Eugene because she the one saying uh, negative stuff about him and degrading uh, stuff about him and him being a man. excuse me oh uh, him being a man and he's not taking care of her physically if you you get my drift you know what i'm saying so if she he liked toy you making a fool out of him and saying in and everything it is is what it is Cause you got to blame eugene you can't blame toy you know what i'm saying um and then we have him also saying that he'll have some time out during the week so i'm like damn are you making 72 hours son and then the rest is going to go up the wind uh, or whatever. Because when you're in a specialty, you do make more money. Uh, so, 
we'll see. We'll see if Eugene uh, think about himself sometime and think about his health uh, versus Toya spending all the money plus what she makes on uh, Merit the Medicine. So, you know, she has a job in a sense. It's not a demanding job, you know what I'm saying? But uh, she has a job, and I'm pretty sure she don't pay no bills with her money, and that would be a no-no for me. But anyway, uh, let's go on into, uh, let's see, the audio of this particular episode that they're giving us. Okay, come on. I don't know why my phone be buffering. Okay, here we go. And he glued your pen back on. Yeah. Well, the glue is the cheese, right? No one, this one. Put it to the side of here. Do you guys like being back at home? Remember? The elves, they took care of the house, right? So they could protect us, right? Now our, the house is safe, right? Yeah. It was basically a lazy Sunday. We got home, you know, around 9 o'clock. Ariana and I walk upstairs, and every cabinet door was open. Where's my ring? They took my ring. <laughs> That's when I called 911. Mommy, I fall. You're full? Okay. Me too. So why don't you go upstairs to your room and wash your face? The next. And my thing is, okay, you calling about your wedding ring. Is this an old one? Or why was your wedding ring off your finger anyway? I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Your wedding ring is supposed to be on your finger all the time. But anyway, we'll go past that. Morning, I drove off to Savannah to see my parents for two weeks. It's just... Y'all, when did her mama go back? The last episode where she was saying she going home to Savannah, was she really serious? Evidently she was, because that's where... Anala, Anila went and took her two kids to spend some time because she was upset about the robbery and the break-in. So she kicked her mom and them out. Okay, okay. So traumatizing for not just us, but for our kids. The love that I felt in this house, the warmth that I felt in this home, it's, the, it's the safety, it's the security. Like someone was watching us. That's the scariest part. What enemies do we have, Karen? This was like, oh, I want to get you. You know what happened a couple days ago? Emily said between y'all three bitches, somebody said I slept with somebody in the neighborhood. Anila. Now, Karen, come on now. You just pulling at straws and you you trying to put a face with the attempted robbery or not attempted because it actually got your shit, okay? So a well-planned out, organized robbery. You trying to put toy in it? That's pretty dangerous unless you got some um, evidence to be backing up because that could be a lawsuit, Karen. That could be a lawsuit. But anyway, going back. Bitch, yeah, I'll take I, my shoe off I, and put it in your I, face. I, That's the only thing I can think of. I don't want to accuse anyone, but the fact that no other home got robbed without saying it, you can take a guess on who can maybe know something about it. While you were gone, I made a few changes. So basically, every door that we have is being watched. You can now see on the phone, right? Oh, wow. Every room. And it's like live. Yep. Prior to the invasion, I think I was a little bit relaxed in my sense of security. Kids' rooms, they're going to be taken care of. I'm not going to make that mistake again. So what do we have? But my thing, Karen, you live in probably a mansion, darling. It is uh, good to have security if you're not going to have the physical man or woman protecting your home while you sleep and you go through your slumber. Um, you need it to have cameras anyway. So if that was a good chance or that was a good thing that happened with the robbery, the bad thing that turned into a good thing of you getting security, sir, then be glad you got robbed okay because you should have had the uh forethought forethought to um put security in your home okay just because you're living behind a gated community don't mean that you don't have thieves and robbers right up there with you okay all right over here because this was obviously the main area this is where oh my god i can't i can't I hate looking in this closet. 
this was like my happy place right here. And now, Neela is just too materialistic. I'm like, I can't, I can't, my stuff is gone. I'm like, girl, like Karen said, everything can be replaced, but your lives cannot. But just the whole ordeal that she's like, oh, all my jewelry is gone. Oh my, it's like, oh, girl, get a life, woman, get a life. Be glad you were saved and it didn't happen when y'all were at home and in y'all sleeping slumber and y'all awaken to somebody, you know, taking your stuff and, you know, could have did other things as well. Be grateful, Anila. Be grateful, baby. Now it's like, look at all this gone. Every freaking no. piece of jewelry. Me, I know. I have not stepped foot into my closet since the night of the robbery. Why would someone do this? It, it sucks, but even though I hate to say it, can be filled back up again. Okay, let's go downstairs because this is a little bit too traumatic. I can't. For you. I can't be in here. I can't. Then why are you in the house, honey? So you mean that one room? Just bring you so much joy, and you dress up like you, you're a five-year-old, a seven-year-old playing dress-up. Um, girl, get it together. Get it together. Mason, now wait a minute. Let me tell Now you got stuff coming all over through here, and it's really just ruining my appetite. Clean up around your mouth. Did you, did you put that on your mouth? I did not put it on my mouth. I just <laughs> pretended. There you go, buddy. At some point tonight, we got to go in there and work on the book. We did have some good times. And I don't know what Simone and Cecil are talking about. Cecil is more open and ready to expose himself to... Him being vulnerable, him doing the wrong thing with another woman. It may have not been uh, physical, but it was mental. So I can understand what uh, uh, Simone was talking about. But I'm like, girl, you're going to write a book and you're not even going to put your struggles in it when it came to you and Cecil's marriage and questioning whether or not y'all needed to be together and still going down this marriage lane. Girl, I'm Rosa said, like, honey, you're going to have to put the real meat and potatoes in this book if you want it to go somewhere. How are you going to write a book and leave the, the most important thing out, which was y'all struggle to stay together at one point in time? i like, okay, Simone just made this as a storyline. She don't really have no intentions of bringing that book to fruition because it brings up in her eyes, in her mind, too many bad memories that she really hasn't dealt with. She just muddled over it and felt like, you know, her marriage did have something. Uh, in a sense, she probably said, hell, it's better to have somebody than nobody. So she just chalked it all up. Okay? We are still having them. <laughs> you put grease on your meat? I'm a chef, Toy. Boy RD. <laughs> you know you ain't had no boy RD up in this house. We got any more old shots set up for today? Not for today, but we definitely have some for next week. Okay. Girl. Hey. Hello. Hey. How are you? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Ray, this is Dawn. Okay, perfect. And Dawn is a nurse practitioner, so she sees patients. And then she runs the Medi Spa. You come so. through in the clutch. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to add a picture in there. Uh, Y'all remember last week, not well, week four last, where um, Dr. Jackie had interviewed a doctor named Dr. Bullard. Uh, yeah, she ended up hiring her, which I already knew she was going to do because she didn't have any other people uh, that was lined up for her to interview. So I'm like, come on, Jackie. That was just real cheesy. Anyway. Yeah, I, Everybody needs one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been nine years since we've hired a new doctor. 
but we needed somebody to help take the patient load off. I'm a cheerleader. Oh. I cheer my patients on to advocate for themselves. I tell them, you should know your labs too, not mm -hmm. just me. Okay. And Dr. Bullard, I liked her. I liked her energy. I liked her spirit. We're super excited to add you to the family. Plus, there is a need now for more black female physicians in OBGYN, and she fit the check marks for everything. Check-in is here, check-out is there, and I'm going to take you down the hall a little further so that you can uh, see your typical exam rooms. And most of them are all set up the exact same way. You know, I, I cannot function with dysfunction, so I make sure, and my partners have learned now to probably leave me alone with that part. Okay. Cleansing wipes, clinics. You just post everything into here and not into there. Okay? Do you have any OCD? I'm not OCD. Please put them in order so that there's one straight line. What are vitamins, honey? I, I take cruciferous, I take vitamin D3, I take zinc. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's just chicken. You give me some hand sanitizer? Hold on, hold on. Bam! We got all sides. There we go. Honey, everything you need, boom. It's not obsessive. It's just order. Decent and in order. Sometimes, this is for our older ladies. And you know, you see how you just put that out of order? So we keep order. Ooh, yes, God. I do invite you to make suggestions. What about some pink gloves? Do you know how much pink gloves cost? Don't get it twisted. I still run things around here. Can we fit it in the budget? Are you gonna take a pay cut? No, 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 we can do blue. Oh, That's fine. <laughs> Purple gloves it is. That's what I'm, I'm gonna saying. keep my money. As a new doctor, she reminds me so much of myself where I walked in like, I got this. I was so scared. I was shaking in my pants. Let me take a seat oh, and yeah, fill it yours, out. It's girl. It's all yours. Oh, and I brought you some things. I, I wanted you oh, to look like so me. sweet. And so I have the exact same... Oh. Dr. Jackie thinks she has a mini-me running around there. She bought the lady some scrub, a scrub outfit. She bought her a Gucci uh, saddle bag or crossover bag. I was like, damn, Judy. I mean, Jackie must be paying or charging her patients a lot of money. Okay? I'm like, a Gucci uh, cross bag. That... Okay, that's how you getting down. All right then, girl. I wonder what you get your employees oh, for Christmas time. Got to be something plush, I'm sure. What going on? Gosh. Scrubs on. I got lost on the way to the hospital. I was coming from a small town in Macon, Georgia to Atlanta. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And always stay cute. Even though we have to wear Ooh. scrubs. I didn't know where to park. I'm asking, like, how do I get to labor and delivery? Bam. Oh. Bam. Put a speculum in there? Girl, not a speculum. You be walking around with Gucci on in the hospital? Oh, yeah. Lord. That's what we do. My God, how life has changed. I'm ecstatic. This is amazing. I feel like I got a mini me coming along here. Here we go. All right, babe. And that was Jackie's time on Merit to Medicine and her trying to get her new uh, compadre partner uh, employee <laughs> together. So that was that was cute enough. That was cute enough. And I, I pretty much told you about the other stuff. Um, well, I didn't really tell you about um, Dr. Heavenly was basically trying to get out uh, Jackie's house because Jackie had a little celebration for them by doing some type of clinic and she wanted to um give back to them for donating their time and attention to uh some fair she had going on health fair and uh she had them eating outside in the cold child i mean it was probably like 40 something degrees and when you 40 something degrees in georgia you better have on some uggs uh we call it those boots and, and you a, a big bomber jacket to knock some of the wind off you and you better have a little cute furry hat to put on top of that head okay and where it secures your ears but she had them sitting out there until she felt like she couldn't take it anymore and then she invited the women uh to come on inside but she still had the men on the outside i'm like what the hell jackie got going on has she lost some of her marbles but, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. 
guys that I took from um, Merit and Medicine, other, other than the robbery, of course, and um, um, Dr. Heavenly getting mad because they were trying to blame her about something and her mother had just passed. So she was going through a lot of different emotions. But I was like, it was funny as hell. She tried to get out that door and make a grand uh, exit. She didn't even know how to open up the door. Dr. Jack had locked that door back. She was sitting up there like, oh, I can't go nowhere. I feel so stupid. I mean, I'm just playing on what she probably said in her mind. Why I can't get out this damn uh, door. And then she hollers and said, somebody open this damn door before she break it down. or Something to that degree. I was like, doctor, doctor, times, if you don't stop that mess, if you don't stop it. But that's all I got, y'all. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed it, and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye-bye.